Hi, I'm Caleb. I've been getting some questions about what kind of gear I use when shooting weddings, what I bring with me, what I use, kind of how I use it, uh, just a rough overview. So one of the first things I wanna talk about is actually the bags that I use. When you first get into shooting weddings and stuff, we overlook what we're actually using to carry our equipment. Um, is it easy to access, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll start here with my backpack. They're from Bagsmart. It can hold two of my cameras, three or four of my lenses, all my audio equipment and stuff like that. Um, actually, some of the audio equipment I have, I actually keep in a little bag like this, and I just kind of snap this onto here. There's this little pocket on the side here if you need quick access to certain things, like either your camera, or for me, it's my lenses and some uh, batteries and stuff like that. Top part of this, there's this nifty pocket where I can keep things like my ND filters and uh, my XLR cord, um, some sensor cleaning materials, some, you know, other stuff like that. Uh, this is where all the good stuff is. Camera bodies in here. If I look, I can stick my GH4 right in there. All right, it's nice. When I first got this, I was really tempted to, to just kind of keep it on and I would kind of, when I needed to switch lenses, I would just sling it around my shoulder and uh, open up this side pocket to pull my lenses out. But I felt like the bag started kind of slipping off my shoulder and almost falling. So I use kind of a different method um, for the lenses. I use a different bag. So I kind of use this as like my base of operations, but I'll usually just kind of set it down on the ground and go to it when I need it. I like my audio equipment to be able to come off easily. If I know I'm gonna be walking around for a while and I'm gonna need to mic up the groom or the uh, officiant at some point, I like to have a detachable little audio bag that I can clip onto my belt so that I can keep my audio with me because you never know where they're at. And sometimes you need to grab a few shots and then just quickly whip this out and mic them up. So I think through all this stuff real strategically. I don't like to have to stop moving and go back anywhere. And I also don't like to lug everything around with me all the time. Now, I have this other little bag and all this really does for me is it holds some batteries and it just holds some lenses. I mean, uh, right now I got some cords and stuff in there but this will hold two or three lenses. Usually it holds all the lenses I need. And um, I just keep this on me when I'm uh, in a situation where I know I may be switching lenses a lot and I'll just, I'll be able to just kind of open it up, grab a lens out real quick. And I also usually have my ND filters in here. So that's my second little bag. And then the last bag is I have a large Manfrotto rolling um, light stand bag. That's where my light stands go, my lights go, my tripod goes, um, and anything else I need to just get shoved in those pockets. You should really research and invest in good bags and think through all the things that you're gonna wanna be doing. Um, you're not really 100% gonna know until you've done a few weddings, but it's definitely worth thinking about. All right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is cameras. I shoot on a Panasonic GH5. I love the Panasonic GH5. It's just an awesome run and gun camera. It shoots at really good resolutions, 10 bit color. Biggest allure of it to me though is the in body image stabilization. I mean, you can hand hold the thing and it would almost look like you're on a gimbal, especially depending on what lens you have on there. So um, I've gone through full weddings just holding it, hand holding it and gotten amazing footage all throughout. I like that I can shoot in 4K in 60 frames per second. That's really, really nice. Um, nowadays, that's starting to become a little bit more normal, but when it came out, that wasn't as normal, so it was kind of like an awesome deal with that. Either way, it still has great image. This is my GH4. I use this for um, when I do the wide shots of like the ceremony and stuff like that, if, I, if somebody wants full coverage. Anyway, so I'm gonna hold this and talk about the GH5 because I'm filming on the GH5 right now, so I can't show it to you, um, unless I could like stretch the lens back, but I can't do that. Yeah, so the GH5 looks exactly like this, except it says, uh, it says, it says five right there instead of four, and it's a little bigger. Um, but what happens is on the GH5 is that little sensor kind of moves around a little bit. The image is super, super smooth. It's got the nice swiveling screen. 
like that. It makes everything really easy. During the day, I feel like with the right lens, the autofocus gets by. Uh, I will actually use autofocus a lot on it. I don't think it's so terrible that it's unusable until it gets dark. Once it gets dark, I'm usually switching to um, faster lenses anyways. They're real easy to focus and I don't use autofocus at that point anymore. The color profile I used to use was a natural profile that was customized. Then after a while I switched over to Cine Like D because I had invested in a LUT pack that most of it was based around Cine Like D. I usually shoot 24 frames per second, um, 30 frames per second every once in a while when I get some like dreamy looking kind of like detailed stuff of people getting ready and stuff like that and uh, 60 frames per second if I want everything to go in slow motion. When I shoot a ceremony, I shoot the whole ceremony in 60 frames per second. Because um, from when everybody starts coming down the aisle to when they're walking back up the aisle, I don't ever stop recording, so I'd rather it all be in 60 frames per second so I can slow anything down when I need to. Um, I also, what I love about these two cameras is there is no record limit. I can film for as long as there's battery and as long as there's storage and it'll, it'll be fine. I'm recording through the whole ceremony, even if I'm not aiming the camera at something in a moment, I'm still recording on it, and it makes syncing up the audio later super, super easy. I have like 150 different reasons why I love the GH5. Uh, I have three main setups that I'm using when I'm filming. The first setup is my GH5, my Lumix uh, 12 to 35 lens, on my Weeble S gimbal. Like if, if I had to bring any three things with me to a wedding, it would be those three things. GH5 has awesome in-body image stabilization. The Lumix 12 to 35 lens has awesome optical image stabilization. When you put those two together, I mean, you can just walk around with that setup and you'll be good. But then you put that on top of a gimbal and that's just one extra, I mean, they all just work together so flawlessly that a lot of times when you have a gimbal, you have to be careful about a lot of up and down motion. But with the GH5 stabilization and a lens stabilization working together, um, that gets rid of most of that. So you just have buttery, smooth perfection. Um, and then if you're filming in 60 frames per second and you slow that down, you, you just have nothing to worry about. So it's so easy to walk around and film that. And the, the 12 to 35 um, focal length, uh, it's kind of like shooting on a, uh, 35 millimeter equivalent is a 24 to 70 lens um, with that constant aperture of 2.8. Now, disclaimer, that 2.8 aperture is not really a 2.8 when you're on the GH5. It's really more like a 5.6, so you don't get super shallowed up the field. But this is my safe setup. My next setup is same thing, except instead of the 12 to 35 lens, I'll use the Laowa 7.5 millimeter lens. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. You remember when I mentioned this bag? This is the Laowa 7.5 millimeter lens. Once you put it on the GH5, you have to take that 7.5 and multiply it by two. So it gives you just about a 15 millimeter lens. So that's very, very wide. And that's what I use for all my like big establishing shots. It's also what I use for real estate. Sometimes actually I may start the day off with that. I'll walk around the whole venue with that first and just get a whole bunch of establishing stuff. Then I will switch to my 12 to 35 and rebalance the gimbal. And these are actually the only two lenses that I use on the gimbal. I'll use this lens on the camera, on the gimbal for the beginning of the day. I'll also use it during the reception. I'll put that gimbal on a monopod and lift it up really high and get almost like drone footage. I like to get close to something like a chandelier or something and I'll just kind of like do this nice little crane shot um, and everybody looks at you weird because you're sitting there holding this thing up and it looks like you're trying to like kill a dragon with a spear. The next setup that I use is handheld and I'll have this sling around me and basically you, you're supposed to screw this into the bottom of your camera so you can just let go. Stuff, it's for photographers. But what I did was I attached a quick release plate to it. When I need to switch lenses, I can just kind of stick this on there. and It'll hang like that. And I can use both my hands to unzip my little bag. Remember this little bag? So I'll unzip it, take a lens out, stick it on here, 
put the other one back in, you know, cap it up and stuff. And then once I'm done, I just take that off and let this hang on me and stuff. Uh, or if I need to help the photographer with anything um, and I need both hands, I can just drop that on. It's not gonna fall off or anything like that. It's great. So with that set up, um, that's when I'll use all my other lenses, my rocket on. 35 millimeter and my rocking on 85 millimeter. Before I move on to lenses, <clears throat> quick release plates, okay? So these quick release plates that I get, it's these little square ones like this, okay? Because I'm shooting so lightweight, these are perfect. They're like 10 bucks each. I have tons of them. I put them on everything. Find yourself some good quick release plates that you don't mind buying a whole bunch of and putting everywhere that are gonna be strong. Like I said, these ones are like 10 bucks and I've never had any problem with them. They're extremely strong. I wouldn't put a cinema camera on this, but these little guys, I mean, that's, like I said, it's not, it's not coming off. Um, and watch your fingers with them because they kind of bite. Let's talk about other lenses. These three are all prime lenses, okay? This one and my 12 to 35 are the only two lenses that are actually micro four thirds lenses that attach right to the camera body. Um, these two lenses are EF lenses meant for like Canon EF mounts. Um, so th these are for full frame cameras. I love that I can use them on my GH5. I do need to use an adapter. I use this Viltrox um, EF Mark II adapter. Um, and it's a speed booster. So what that does is that gives it more light. But yeah, so this is my rocking on 35 millimeter lens. Um, this is probably my favorite lens that I have right now. I don't typically use it first at a wedding, but I will try to use it a lot. The first one I always go for is my 12 to 35. That's my safe lens. So if things are moving real fast, I keep my 12 to 35 on and just get the stuff shot. Um, if we have some time, I'll usually pull out this one and go handheld shooting on this for a long period of time. I have shot uh, pretty much an entire wedding with this lens handheld before and it came out awesome, I loved it. When you attach this to a GH5 through a speed booster, it's really gonna be more of a 50 millimeter lens than a 35, it's just something to bear in mind. This is the 85, um, same thing, it's just a lot tighter. Once you put this onto the camera uh, through the speed booster, it's really more like a 90 or 100, but when you're doing like cocktail hour, this is the lens that I wanna use. Um, because I can film people while they're just talking to each other and they won't notice me filming because I'm so far away. When you're filming outside and you have a lens that has a nice depth of field on it, you definitely want to use an ND filter of some sort because that's how you're going to get that shallow depth of field and not mess up your shutter speed at all. So as you can see, this one here, um, what happens is as you turn it, you can change the intensity of how dark it is. You just, you screw that onto here and then darken it down. Beep, 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 beep. Let's talk about audio. So like I said, I got little bags for my audio stuff. So when it comes to audio, the main thing is micing up the efficient and micing up the groom. I use these Tascam DR10Ls. I'm actually recording on it right now. They're simple, they're small, they're lightweight. Uh, they, have a, they come with a lav mic. For the efficient, I'll usually just clip it onto their lapel. For the groom, um, I'll a lot of times clip it on as well, but if, they, if it seems like they'd want it hidden, then what I can do is I use these, are called Rycoat Stickies. They're these little sticky things, okay? And what you do is you just peel it off and you stick it to the mic and you stick it onto the inside of their lapel. You just run that back through their um, jacket and then you can't see it. I prefer to clip them on on the outside because between the officiant and the groom, the microphones will pick up the bride. I don't mic the bride. I know people who do. They say it's great. I've thought about it. Um, but most of the time, the brides I work with are not interested in that. Something cool about these is they record two volumes at the same time. That's awesome because sometimes somebody talks really loud at one part and it peaks. So I just use the next audio file for that part. They do record for a very, very, very long time. Uh, without running out of space. It breaks it up into a bunch of files though, like four minute files, but you know, it's, I still get it. The next thing is I will plug into the DJ's audio using these Zoom H1s. Again, these are inexpensive. Um, 
the time I got them, they were like $100 or $120. And I had like four of them and that was when I first started shooting weddings and I still use them because they're awesome. And all I really do is I just have uh, one eighth inch cord like this that I'll bring with me. And I have adapters for this. I have the line in and I just plug it into here and I go up to the DJ and I say, you know, what, what outputs do you have for me? And they'll say, oh, we have RCA. So I'll take my RCA, plug in like this, plug it in, there you go, RCA setup. Oh no, if we're doing quarter inch, then I'll use a little quarter inch adapter. Don't just buy any one of these, get one that works. Um, actually, I think this one does not work. So I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I'm gonna be frank with you. Getting a quarter inch, um, super rare that anybody ever tells me that they use quarter inch. Maybe other people use it a lot but it's very, very rare that I use one. That's why I don't even know if that adapter works. I barely use it. I would say instead get a cord that is just eighth inch, two quarter inch instead of an adapter. My last cord um, is your eighth inch to XLR. That's the one I use the most. Always bring spare batteries, always. Every single time I shoot a wedding, I switch the batteries out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much I use the mic. I switch the batteries out because if there's that one time that it doesn't work, I'm going to be not a very happy man. This case that I use for my Zoom H1s is a uh, pencil holder and it works. <sighs> now I'm gonna talk about lighting. So when we hit the reception, it usually gets dark. And with the GH5 it does not like the dark very much. It does good in the dark, but not that good. Even if I had a camera that shot really well in the dark, bringing lighting is still essential it's not just about making it so the camera can see. It's about shaping the shadows to look a certain way. When I shoot weddings, I'm usually using two of these. These are called Came TV Boltsons. And yeah, they're real simple. It powers on and off and you can dim it and stuff. It's got these barn doors on them to keep in your sheep. Actually, I also heard they're good for keeping light from spilling on other things. It's got this little Fresnel thing in here, so if I pull it out, it will focus the light a little more. If I push it in, it'll make it a little wider. I put two of these on really tall light stands. You can put batteries in these or you can just like plug it into a wall for power. Um, I used to use batteries. I prefer to plug it into a wall because I like the fact that I, I'm not nervous about them running out of batteries. Usually what I do actually is I put it upside down like this so I can reach these better when they're up higher. And then I have the cord come out of the top, wrap around one of these knobs and go down so it keeps the cord from tugging right here. One of the downsides about lighting when you put something up high on a tripod is turning the lights on and off. These can be used with Wi-Fi. The weird thing about them though is it's not like built in. You have to get this Wi-Fi dongle thing. You have to like assemble like this, you plug this in, and then you take this and you stick it on the back of there like that. Uh, and then you turn it on, you wait for this light to blink and you try not to wiggle it or it'll disconnect and then you have to sync your phone up to it and then that takes forever. And I don't even know how I figured out how to get it to actually connect the first time, but I did after a long time and I, and I just kind of always hope it's gonna work each time. So I would say if you were to get these, go for the newer ones um, or get one of the remotes or something like that. But these lights have been doing me well. I am pretty happy with them. What else I like about them is you can unscrew the barn doors and you can add in other attachments. So when I do like interview stuff, I'll put the speed mount attachments onto these. Um, and I'll put soft boxes on and I can remove, you can remove this for now part. You can see that LED light right there. Um, these are actually, they're actually pretty bright. They're actually, they, they do a good job. However, I'm probably going to be switching to using the Aperture 300X. That being said, the difference is, this is $500 for two of these, and now you got two lights versus the Aperture 300X was $1,000 for the one light. Like I said, this, this Wi-Fi system does work. It is not my favorite though. The moral of the story there is use what you've got and you will actually be able to get by on it. In fact, I use these because there was another videographer who recommended them to me and this is a photographer that shoots like celebrity weddings and stuff. His name's Alexander Ma. Uh, yeah, I shot him a message asking about it. He sent me these. He said that's what he was using at the time and so that's what I started using and it, it worked out. Other lights that I bring with me 
are those newer CN160s, okay? These are cool. They got these little gels on them and stuff. I mean, these, these are like, when I first started shooting weddings, I was like, oh, I need a light. And I got two of those. Everybody I know has them. Um, you use them more often than you think, especially once you put up your other, like your main lights and they're plugged in, you can't move those around. Suddenly they're like, oh, we're gonna do cake cutting now. And you, you didn't expect it because they didn't give you a heads up for some reason. You're like, great, I gotta go light that. You pull those out. You just pull them out. They're in batteries, they'll last forever. Though I usually have about four light stands with me. Two are really tall, two are not. I have a Manfrotto monopod uh, with the fluid head on it. Frankly, I rarely use that during the wedding because the GH5 is so stable. Um, when I was using DSLRs that didn't have that in-body image stabilization, I would use that Manfrotto monopod most of the time. Things that I have in my bag, I have screwdrivers, Allen wrenches, anything that I use to fix my gear when it inevitably falls apart uh, at all the wrong times as, as happens. And it's just nice to be able to just calmly reach into your bag and grab a little iron wrench and tighten something up real quick and nobody has to know that uh, stuff like that happens. Um, but it does, and you can ask anybody. And don't ever let anybody tell you that it doesn't happen because it does. Gaff tape is good to bring along, especially when you need to mark where people need to stand for their toasts. You put a little X on the ground and they will stand there, um, hopefully. And, uh, but at least you did your best. At least you said, hey, I put an X on the ground. They were supposed to stand right there in the light. Pretty much any little camera accessories I have that are small, like it's not for like holding phones and stuff like that. Those little things just come in handy when you're troubleshooting problems. You just go to your little kind of like miscellaneous pocket. Because when you're a filmmaker, you're also most of the time uh, troubleshooting problems that occur that you would never have thought would occur. Thank you very much for watching. That's the uh, gear that I use when shooting weddings. Hopefully you found that helpful. If there is anything I brushed over that you wish I would have explained a little bit more or talked more about, stay so in the comments. And yeah, like and subscribe. Have a good day.